thanks for thanks for letting me have this interview. Oh, my pleasure. And um, just want you to uh, explain what the game is about to the uh, people who will be watching this. Sure. So, uh, Lord of the Rings is basically an opportunity, finally, for uh, players to go into Middle Earth and uh, join the War of the Ring and become a part of, uh, you know, the battle to to keep Middle Earth safe and be part of the Free Peoples. It's a um, you know, next generation MMO that gives you all the kind of experiences and, and uh, challenges you expect in an MMO, but in a really rich world that we all know really, really well. Um, when, when you designed the, the, the world of Middle Earth, mm -hmm. um, where did you get your influence from? Um, from? From the books or from the film or both? From the books. I mean, the, the yeah. source material that we always go back to is the books and, yeah. and all the supportive material. And there's been so much written by Tolkien about. <laughs> yeah, um, and that's what we really go back to. I mean, the, the, the films. The biggest thing for us about the films is it help. We have to pay attention to that because it, it has a, a lot to do with the expectation of the players who are coming into the game, right? Mm -hmm. What they expect to see, who they expect to meet, where they expect to go. But other than that, we really go back to the books for everything. Okay. And um, for how's future content going to work? Mm -hmm. So uh, again, Turbine has a real history of uh, updating content on a regular basis and mm -hmm. we're probably going to be as aggressive with that with this game as we have with any game that we've done. Right. In some respects more back to our AC1 roots, mm -hmm. you know, where we yeah. did lots of live events, we did lots and lots of content. Um, my team is already working on the content that's going to launch shortly after the game launches. So mm -hmm. um, we are going to continually be putting out free content updates as well as retail updates. Um, right what shape they take in terms of expansions and retail is really going to depend on how the market evolves over the next six to twelve months. We're going to be watching that closely to make sure that we're giving, you know, giving people what they want, okay. not assuming that, you know, the, the model is exactly the same as it's been for the last three or four years. Yeah. With the success of other MMOs mm -hmm. like Warcraft, mm -hmm. how do you um, intend to compete with that and gain that audience when yep. they've got such a monopoly of it, if you will. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, the way we look at uh, Blizzard and WoW and what they've done is they've expanded the market, right? They've taken the market yep. from a niche market to a mainstream market, and that's just good for us, you know? Think of it as um, the first time someone came out with a successful romantic comedy, and it was the, yep. you know, it was the new genre in film, exactly. and people didn't just go see that one movie over and over again. They wanted to get new experiences and new, so we think that that, that in itself provides an opportunity. Um, second of all, the fact that it is Lord of the Rings and it's in yeah. Middle Earth. That said, for the game itself, we've taken a lot of things that have done been done in existing MMOs, taken them to the next level. The look and feel of the game, the quality of the graphics in the game, the way that our advancement system works. And yeah. I talked about that a little in the presentation. Is mm -hmm. we think is really an important change in terms of engaging players in sort of an ongoing, you know, yeah. uh, relationship with their character and how it's being customized as you go along. Um, the way group combat works, the way that our PvP system works. I think there's a lot of things that are unique and exciting about what we're doing in the game itself. So. And uh, when exactly does the game take place with, in turn with the, the books. film? Yep. Yeah, I mean with the books. The, the launch game starts about the time that uh, Frodo leaves the Shire. Right. And it goes pretty much through the beginning of, the, pretty much through the end of the first books. It goes okay. until just before uh, Moria and Lorien and all that stuff. Okay. Um, it, so it maps somewhat to the first film, although even the first film is a little bit different than the yeah. books themselves. So, but basically that's how it's how it's structured. And will it sort of advance onwards? Or? Yep, exactly. I mean, it won't. It's not step by step literal, but yeah, right. it will eventually begin to move into Moria, out across the Misty Mountains, then down into sort of Rohan and those areas down there. And so you will find yourself, you know, making your way through Middle Earth much in the same way as the Fellowship did. Is there any possibility that we might get? Uh, to Mount Doom eventually. Absolutely. There's certainly that possibility. Sure. It's just a matter of when. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I mean, we definitely want, we want you to experience all the parts of Middle Earth that you've been, you know, dreaming about. Yeah. And finally, um, but before Andy mentioned live events, mm -hmm. will this be something that happens in this game? Absolutely. Yeah. Huge sure. commitment from us. In fact, we started doing this as early as Alpha. Yeah. Um, in our alpha game in the U.S., uh, a bunch of players got together on uh, on Bilbo's birthday, oh, right. which happens to be Tolkien's birthday. They, yeah. said, they started planning on the forums, we noticed. They were saying, yeah, let's all meet on his birthday at the, the party tree. Mm -hmm. So we made an event out of it. And we showed oh, up with fine. GMs, and we handed out pies, and we shot off fireworks, and that's the kind of thing we want to do. Mm -hmm. And we're also building tools into the game itself to have more programmatic triggered live events. 
because when we're running dozens of shards someday, you know, running them with GMs is going to be hard to do as frequently as you want to do them. So we're also going to have sort of programmatic driven, you know, events that are happening in the game. So for whatever reason, when, um, you know, we're even talking about tying it to some of the events that are happening in monster play. So what happens if mm -hmm. all of the major keeps and controllable areas in the monster play area are controlled by the bad guys? Maybe that triggers some events that happen throughout the world where there seems like there's a lot more marauding orc. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks. Oh, thank